Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to contain three of my very first clears of Legend Volk in co-op. I will also be sharing at the very end as an added bonus a Deathless solo clear as well to kind of commentate on that and some of the differences between solo and co-op play for this fight. I'm really excited about this battle so that's why I decided to upload this video today. And I just got my first ever clears yesterday, so even though there's a This Month in Fregalia Lost, expect a video about that a little bit later in the week, probably tomorrow. I'm also excited about some of the news, but I wanted to give my impressions and opinions on Folk's Wrath on Legend Difficulty, since this is pretty cool content in my opinion, and it's something that pleasantly surprised me. So to start things off, we've got kind of a standard comp here. I'll try and narrate, give a little play-by-play -play of what's happening. I tried with this same set of teammates for several days to get the first clear. It took us about three or four days of practice where we got very, very close runs in but weren't quite able to pull it off, and this was the run that finally succeeded for us for the first time. So big shout out to them, they're all friends over from the Discord. I haven't tried this fight as much in public lobbies, but one thing I want to acknowledge and praise right away about this battle is it definitely brings back memories of the standard high dragons when they were first released. Back then, a lot of the rewards that you got from high dragons were essentially cosmetic. I mean, you could unlock dragons, which were pretty decent at the time because dragons were hard to come by. There were no draconic essences. So there was some gameplay aspect to the rewards that you would get. Same thing with uh, the Fafnirs that were available that gave you a little bit of a boost. But in general, whether or not you were clearing the High Dragons, it was more of a personal satisfaction thing, like putting in the time, investing to learn the fight, and finally being able to pull it off even once felt really good. I think Legend hits on that same note extremely well. And one thing I want to say is I felt such a bond with my teammates after we were finally able to pull this off. Like, we had grown and aged and time had passed and I really felt that we had improved a lot from our beginning days when we were first learning this battle. So if you want that same experience, I would encourage you to kind of just go into this flight blind and try play with the same group. That is harder to get in public lobbies, but what I would say is don't be discouraged if you are in a public lobby and experience a few failures. One of the things I found most effective for this battle was honestly just getting in additional reps, preferably with the same group of people so you can kind of learn and familiarize yourself with uh, how they play, what's going on, what the patterns are, and everything like that. So as you can see here, we've broken. There's a lot that I haven't really talked about in our commentary, but uh, due to something that happened in this particular run, there is going to be a follow-up run to this one and then my third clear, which will be more refined in nature. But uh, yeah, we were able to break. Loen is using an off-element dragon, Gaun and Krenna. There is a popular alternative strategy here that uses two characters with that off-element dragon to turbocharge Ezolith's. Ezolith can really utilize Karina and Xander's shared skills well, and in that alternative strategy, which is kind of like the speedrun strategy for this, uh, that tends to get used and it's pretty effective, it's more consistent. But as you can see, you may have noticed, unfortunately, one of our team members disconnected. And normally I don't really notice that right away because I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing in the battle. And I noticed there at the snapping squalls because I saw Mim following me and uh, that was very, very unfortunate. So at this point I knew that our team member had disconnected. However, we had never made it this far before on this low of uh, life total for Volk. So we ended up keeping going here, and I was trying to use my skills a little bit more judiciously to protect Mim. Not super effectively, but this resentment uh, Berserk phase is kind of like the ultra instinct moment of this fight, and Berserk is designed that way in general. If you're not familiar, once Volk goes Berserk, his moves no longer have indicators. So he'll use some of the same attacks that he uses earlier in the fight, like his swipes, his backslash, as well as his dash. He does all sorts of things like that, even his overwhelming hunger, but you can't actually see where it's hitting on the screen. So you have to be really familiar with his patterns and his tells in order to be successful at this phase, or alternatively, the best defense is a good offense, and you can just clear either early in Berserk or before Berserk even starts. 
Having said that, that was very tragic for our Mim player there, and so we decided we had to go back in. We were fully committed that we were going to continue this run until we also got our Mim friend their first clear as well. So this was my first clear, a very sad outcome with one person disconnecting so deep into the run. Their character was able to survive and probably kind of carried us at the end there with some of the skill damage, but we had to redo it nevertheless. And so that is how I ended up getting my second clear, which uh, I'll switch over to now. On this one, I'll try to focus a little bit more on the individual mechanics now that I've kind of talked about how I feel about the fight. And uh, overall, as I said, I like it. I feel like it brings back good memories. I like that the rewards are indeed cosmetic. It is a little bit more grindy than I anticipated, but now that we know the next Legend difficulty isn't going to be around until late January, it feels like there's plenty of time to get all the skins and unbinds that you might want to get by playing this mode because you can get a weekly bonus from this separate from uh, your regular Agito bonus. Okay, here we go with round two. In this one, I think I did a few things better and a few things worse. Let's see how the beginning phase starts here. So ideally with Eslith in this beginning phase, I find that you want to be able to start Howling Meteor as soon as Volk starts walking toward the center. Come off of the center with your jump to make sure you don't get hit by those blades. I did get hit by one, but luckily she's sleep res. And you hit a green orb. Now, normally if you're running with a healer that uh, doesn't need any extra skill charge, you can save all the green orbs for Ezolith. And uh, you should be able to get in two Howling Meteors or three in the first phase. But I tend to like to save all my skills once they're charged there for after the teleport. That's pretty important for Frostbite uptime because the teleport will remove any debuffs and afflictions on the boss. At this point, I'm back in the center. You ideally want to use your second skill before your first and fourth skills with Ezolith. Your second skill gives you a 50% strength buff, but in the last run, I didn't do that a lot because I tend to forget to do that. And uh, this is a point where we're unleashing a lot of damage. You can clear very early in the resentment. The fastest runs clear even before Volk teleports away. But uh, I'm kind of intentionally holding some skills here, trying to sandbag a little bit, because I want to make sure I have my Frostbite-inducing skill early in the second phase of the fight, so that all of my teammates who are using Frostbite Punisher Wormprints can get those turned on pretty quickly. I'm holding skills because I want to start off with that 50% strength increase off of my second skill, and now that I have that, I'm using both my skills, as well as my Dragon Form, because those Howling Meteor buffs do last 7 seconds. Uh, I guess they're Flash of Genius buffs technically, but they're from Ezolith's ability whenever she uses her skill. She gets uh, basically a full 100% critical rate in 20% increments, and those 20% increments last 7 seconds. Basically, any skills you use after your first skill are going to be mostly critical hits, which is pretty nice. It means you can set up some strong Mars skills coming off of a Howling Meteor, or a strong fourth skill uh, for that frostbite induction. Now I didn't use Mars right away there, I ended up using it then, and this was an unfortunate uh, bit of missync on our part with uh, Loen becoming Gaun and Krenna, since for Mars, having that uh, skill recharge zone is effectively useless, that really literally did nothing for me. So that was a bit unfortunate, but we still get a decent break off with the Mars shapeshift ending right around the time of the break, that's kind of what you want to go for and a nice 2 million damage smack there, roughly. Not too bad. I think if we had a Popstar Siren there, we could have probably gotten a little bit better off. Definitely, since I didn't have any extra skill usage, that would have been preferred to have buffs. But uh, the nice thing in this run is I do get an additional Mars usage, uh, excuse me, by having more damage output. I'm able to use that here. Tanked that, uh, that Slash, so I don't get off Mars' skill, I don't believe. Yeah, I wasn't able to get it off, but uh, that's okay. I still have all my skills ready to go and recharge. Forgot to use my second skill first that time. That is a frequent mistake of mine when coming off of Mars. And I'm stunned here, which doesn't look too good for me, but uh, we had already coordinated squall positions. That's also something you probably want to do, is go to the same positions every time. So we kind of knew where we wanted to be. And uh, I'm only talking about Ezlith's perspective here, but there's also a lot else happening as well, like Loen making sure that the Blood Moon in the center stayed plagued there. We'll probably talk about that on the next round. But now that we're in the final phase of the fight, even though the HP looks super low, 
Volk's defense is multiplied by 4 when he's in Berserk state, and even when he's broken, it's still more than his normal defense in uh, the regular battle. So unfortunately, Huden died there. That is a very significant hit for us because swords, their four strikes, are really good at breaking the boss. And we really want to break Volk and Berserk before we can actually do significant damage. Not only that, but Volk has life drain in this phase as well. And when he kills somebody, he gains back a lot of life. So luckily Azlith and Daggers are not too bad as far as their overdrive DPS with their four strike. So I'm trying my best to just spam four strike here, hold up my skills with really my second skill being the only one I really want to use on cooldown. In this phase, after Volk does a couple of his red AoE attacks, obviously with us not being able to really see the red hitbox, then he will do that uh, four way tornado that you just saw. And uh, after that, he will plague everybody with overwhelming hunger. You can roll through it, but it's kind of dangerous because he might steal vitality afterward. And if he steals vitality afterward, you really want to be plagued. He also might do a purple AoE afterward that poisons. And if he does that, you don't want to be plagued, but luckily Lowen can sort of heal you out of it. Eventually we get the break. I have seen this point of the fight long enough at this point and uh, done this long enough that I feel that if we try push for another break, it's just never going to work for us. He's going to life drain. He stacked up a lot of strength buffs. So now my strategy has changed. I'm no longer just trying to spam four strikes. I'm actually going to try use my skills on cooldown and just dish out as much damage as possible, even if it's reduced. And uh, it's very close. He gets another steel vitality off, but luckily we were plagued. And then with this Howling Meteor, as well as Mim's skill, we were able to pull it out, so all hope isn't lost if you lose a teammate early in Berserk, but Berserk is what you want to try minimize. That is why offense is so important for this fight. The lower Volk's HP is going into the Berserk phase, the more damage you deal up front, the better your chances of making it through Berserk. And we're going to see that in my third run that I'm sharing today, which is about a three and a half minute run with a little bit more optimized setup having played this a little bit more and also a different set of teammates that I was just sort of jiving with and playing with for the first time. Had a couple rounds in with them before but this was the first time we were able to clear together. So in this setup we have Valentine's Hildegard instead of Halloween Lowen. I do think Valentine's Hildegard in a standard comp is going to give you more DPS overall but you can build around Lowen and uh, use Lowen's defense buffs to run double buff kits. The thing is, it tends not to be that effective on characters like Mim and Yudin because they're already stacking a lot of strength buffs uh, through their Dragon Transformation and Dragon Claws abilities. So for that reason, I think that uh, here, Hildegard actually works really well. Now that opening was pretty bad, but we still have all our skills charged, so it doesn't really matter. Ideally as Azalith, you do want to bait and uh, having the Yudin take the bait there, I wasn't able to lure Volk into the other sleep trap. And uh, that was definitely a DPS loss. A lot of my first skill just didn't even hit Volk. I was going for the defense debuff here, but I never saw it pop at the top of the screen. So eventually I just got impatient and used my first skill anyway, because I was losing so much SP charge there. And uh, in this team, our DPS is definitely a lot higher. We're going to transform sooner. And for that reason, I'm not really using skills. I'd rather just deal damage in phase one to get more Dragon Gauge, get all my skills ready to be charged. There's not a whole lot of rush to get into phase two. And even at the beginning of phase two, I mentioned how offense is so important in this fight. There are whole mechanics and patterns that you can skip with enough offense. So at the beginning of phase two, Volk walks to the center. He's going to use Overwhelming Hunger, and you can choose to get plagued or not get plagued, but if you already have plague, you don't want to stand in it because you will get poisoned. He then dashes, and if your DPS is low after the dash, he's going to do two swipes. He might do a backslash if it's still low, and if it's very low, he's going to do a Steel Vitality, which you want to be plagued for, but uh, we know our team comp has high enough DPS that we're not worried about that. Afterward, he summons wolves and does overwhelming hunger. And if your DPS is low, you're going to see the black spears there, the four of them, which either plague you or poison you if you're already plagued. You have to be careful with those. Since our DPS is high in this comp, we don't even have to worry about that. We skip straight to the blood moon. As far as the blood moon, you want your healer to be plagued and to pass plague to the blood moon to prevent it from accumulating. 
The way Blood Moon works in Legend is that uh, it basically is a gauge, and once it fills up, if you uh, haven't been able to do enough DPS to keep it down, you lose the battle right away. And uh, that, that's why uh, passing Plague to it prevents it from draining life on y'all, on the team. And um, that can be an effective strategy. Man, there's so much to this fight. I feel like I've just been going nonstop talking about it. But uh, we're doing okay here. This actually didn't seem as good for me as my past run as far as not getting access to another dragon sooner. And I also got hit by a purple swipe. Those purple swipes at the end are very dangerous because you can fill up that Blood Moon gauge. But our DPS is on point enough that uh, we're able to keep it down here. And we almost get to the point where we could have KO'd Volk before he entered Berserk. That is the best case scenario. I, not having done that before, you know, backed off, didn't want to wipe our run to the squalls there, even though maybe staying on it could have gotten the clear. But now we just have to wait for Berserk. Once Volt comes out of Berserk, at this point we are definitely going for the KO, not trying to break at all. And uh, we kind of knew victory was in sight. And uh, yeah, there it was. Couldn't even really start the resentment there. So that's an example of a good run, I feel, in uh, Legend Volk in co-op. If you're not running the double Azalith, you know, Emma slash Marth plus Halloween Lowen, I kind of wish they would have gotten rid of off-element shared skills and off-element dragons. That could have made this fight very interesting. Definitely seems clearable with all flame, including all flame dragons and all uh, flame shared skills. In that run, Valentine's Hildegard was just using Hybrid Hilda, for example. But uh, that would have probably made it even more challenging and potentially more exciting for some of us out there, myself included. All right, so now we're going to wind down with the solo. And this is not a perfect solo, but it's a solid solo. So I wanted to share this with y'all for those who are still trying to learn the solo mechanics. Some of the points of difficulty in the solo, I find, are one, this first phase. A lot of players who hadn't soloed Expert Volk might have trouble figuring out what to do in this phase of the fight. In general, what I like to do is uh, swap to my healer to get rid of that initial plague. You saw I swapped to Verica to do that. Then I like to play a melee DPS, and I prefer to have two other ranged or semi-ranged DPS. When it comes to semi-range, you can think of characters like N Nadine, um, Galalaxy, and you can see there I placed Yudin on the Sleep Bomb. The reason I did that was I wanted maximum separation so that when I tried to heal off the plague after I switched to my healer again, which you want to do there, because if you're plagued, you're going to get uh, stunned or slept by those teleports. Well, when I switched to my healer, I had a little bit more room because one of my characters at least was locked in place. Now, in that example, it wasn't ideal. One of my characters was still really close to me and I got kind of lucky that uh, the plague didn't get onto them. But uh, that is generally what I like to do for this part of the battle. And here, this resentment gets very ugly controlling a melee and not controlling my healer. But I've always just done this with my melee. It might be more efficient to switch to your healer and actually bait here. But I've never found that characters die here unless there's an accident and they somehow get poisoned by that purple targeted skill that targets your lead character. That should only happen if they're plagued. But here, this plague that goes out from this red AoE, if anyone on your team is already plagued, you do want to make sure to iframe that, and in general it's just probably worth iframing. You can iframe that dash as well, but it, it's usually not fatal, so I kind of just tend to ignore it or be a little bit more cavalier about it. But that red one, the red uh, AoE that hit the entire arena, that's particularly important because if it hits any of your plagued characters, they will get poisoned. So when I say iframe, I mean specifically using a skill, because that will protect your team, not rolling, which just protects your lead character. At this point, we're kind of on track with how we were in our co-op runs. These mechanics are fairly similar. Here again, you want to do uh, a skill to iframe. And uh, in single player, if you see this phase of the fight, you only have two black spheres to deal with, or black traps here to deal with instead of uh, multiple. My AI got one of them, and then I just decided to go for the other one. Those do end your dragon form right away, so if you're concerned about it, you could use your dragon form and tank it on one of them and then hit the other one, but you can kind of just ignore those. The only thing that happens if you don't is there's a purple AoE that covers the entire screen. You can tank through it, but it's not ideal. In any case, we got Ray kind of earlier than I expected, so I wasn't super prepared, but luckily did get a dragon right afterward. And my Yudin here has a more dragon-oriented build. I think a lot of builds can work for this, though. I'm mainly using Yudin 
Because his skills are very fast cooldown, that gives me more frequent access to high frames. I haven't really found an ideal way to get through this resentment phase, much like the first one. Those purples are very hard to get your AI to safely avoid without trying to intentionally place your ranged AI kind of together and uh, bait with your melee. Since everybody was spread out here, I just did my best to kind of use skills in a combination of cooldown as well as um, kind of using them when the red lines would fill up, but being a little bit lax with that for sure. Still, we're making good progress there, even though I failed to get off Mars's skill. The other switch that I do, besides the ones in the first phase, is I switch to my healer here. Basically because if you play a melee character and try run with the tornado, you often lose lock-on on Volk. And when you lose lock-on on an enemy, your AI characters start following you, and they will follow right into the tornado. Now that Berserk has started and there's still a decent amount of HP left, I am only using Force Strike with Yudin. Arguably, you might want to use his first skill, and in this case, my fourth skill, which is uh, Gala Mims to charge up my Dragon Gauge as well. But in this case, I just decided just to use these. And uh, now that he's unbroken, I really want to be using skills on cooldown. I actually get very lucky here. This was very greedy to not have saved more skills uh, to iframe. Like, this is actually pretty bad. Any one of my AI could have died a hundred times over just now. And uh, unfortunately Volk does steal vitality before I could go into the mist to get plagued, but ideally you would be able to break even before then or clear this before Berserk started, so you know, that is how it is. And at this point I go for Mars to try and leash DPS while Volk is broken, and I also kind of think at this point with Volk's HP being low, I'm not going to try to break him again, I'm just going to try to go for the clear, similar to uh, what we did in our co-op run. So I think there's one more skill, and yeah, that pretty much closes it out. So I hope you've enjoyed this fast-paced commentary. Try to give my impressions on the fight as a whole at the beginning. I really love it. I think it's a great addition to Dragalia Loss. And uh, those are some example battles. Good luck out there in Legend Volk. Thank you as always for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.